This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're gonna be trying to build cities amongst the area. But in order to do so, we've gotta get some building permits. And in order to do that, we've gotta influence some council members and get them elected and do them some favors. Today, we're talking about Council of Four. This is from Cranio Creations. Uh, it's two to four players, takes about an hour to play. It's pretty quick. Uh, let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. In Council of Four, you're going to be building different emporiums over different villages and gaining points and other bonuses for those over the course of the game. But in order to build, you'll need some permits, and in order to get permits, you'll need to elect different councillors and use politic cards. There's also an, uh, a, a nobility track that you'll be going up at different bonuses that will give you other different things. So let's talk about how a turn works. Now there are four balconies like this in the game, and these are different counselors. What you're trying to do is on, on your turn you get four, uh, one of four main actions. One of the actions you can take is elect a counselor. You will take any of the counselors that's available in the pool off the board and add it to one of these balconies by sliding the oldest counselor that was there off. And when you do that, you actually get four coins for helping this guy get elected. And now the council members are different on this balcony. The one that went off now goes into the pool with all the rest of them off the board. So that guy would go here with the others. There's usually eight off the board at all times. Now when I do that, I'd get four coins. Coins are tracked on the board. One, two, three, four. People start with different coins depending on the st starting turn order. And you'll notice those different balconies, there's four different ones over the board. These three have to do with the different permits that are in front of them. And this one we'll get to later. So that's it. You've done one main action. It'd be somebody else's turn, but what else can you do on your turn as a main action? A different main action I could have taken was actually grabbing these permits. And what I do is I see these counselors here in their specific colors. What I can do is play uh, politics cards of those colors. Everyone starts with six of these cards. And here I have one for each of the counselors here. And I've played four cards. And when I play four cards, I get to take one of these permits for free and get an immediate bonus of that. Here I'd get three gold. Here I'd move up two in that nobility track I showed you earlier. However, sometimes you can play less cards. If I only played uh, two of those cards, I can still get the permit, but I gotta spend seven gold. If I spend three cards, I gotta spend four gold. If I don't, if I spend just one card, I gotta spend ten gold. So the more cards you 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 give, the less you have to pay. There's also some wild cards that you can use. They can be any color, but you have to add a coin. So if I had four cards of these and one of them was this, it would you only be free but I would get, I would have to pay one coin because of the, the wild there. So I would get one of these two permits and I would get one of these two bonuses. Once this is taken, let's say I take this one, I'd get that bonus and a new tile would come out. Now I mentioned the nobility track a little bit earlier, but this would allow me to move up two on the nobility track and you get different goals as things go on. This will get me two points and two coins and then I would give myself two points on the board and there's different things that you can get on the nobility track. Now again, I'm only doing one main action on my turn because the turns move quick in this game. Now that permit I got was this. This would be in front of me. Now you can see this says A and E. The way the board is laid out, by the way, there's three of these panels of boards and they're both double-sided. So there's many different configurations of the game that, that you can get this set up. But here it says A and E. And essentially it's the beginning of the city name. So Archon starts with A and E essentially here is SD. So on my next turn, I can flip this over and keep it in front of me and build an emporium in either one of these cities. So if I build one here, I automatically get the bonus here. This is a one assistant and one of those politics cards. Those are the ones we used uh, to get those uh, counselors, those permits in the first place. Assistants, I'll tell you what they do later. They're sort of currency in the game. I would have built here. Now, if somebody else was already here, for every player that's there, when I build, I have to give up one assistant. So if green was there and I wanted to build here, I'd have to give up one of those assistants. If there were two for however many players, that's how many you would give. Now, interestingly, also interestingly enough, if I already had built, chained together, these two places, when you build somewhere, 
you always get the bonus of where you just built and every other bonus that you are attached to in a, in a one big line. So I would get an assistant and, and a politics card, an assistant and a coin, two coins. And some of these are points. So sometimes you're gonna be getting points and coins and moving up in the ability track. And the best part about this game is when you're comboing together a bunch of items. Now, also what you're trying to do in general is trying to get either all of one area, and one area is one of these boards, so all one, two, three, four, five. If you get a first, if you're the first person to get all five of these here, you will take this bonus five points and put it in front of you. You'll get those at the end of the game. You would also get to take the King's reward, which is the highest one of 25 points. These go down during the game. Now you'll also see that there are some uh, different rewards here. These are for the different colored of cities and they have little numbers on. This shows you that there's two blue cities, three, four, and five yellow cities out there. So for example, if I'm the first person uh, over multiple turns to be able to get both blue cities, I would be able to take this blue and one of these. Everyone always takes, anytime you take a bonus token, you always take whatever's left on top of the king's, uh, king's rewards there. The last of the four possible actions you could take in your turn, remember you're only taking one, is spend politics cards just as you did before. So I could play, you know, two blue, a pink, and a white, or less of those cards and pay money. And essentially, instead of getting a permit like you would have on the other ones, I get to move the king but I've got to pay two gold for every place I move the king. So in this case, when I did that, I could either just build where the king is, and he starts here where there's no bonuses, so I could have just built there. Or, which would have been good because now I'm comboing this together. Uh, but let's say I already had that, and I got the king's favor again. I would then could pay him two gold to move here, and I could build here without a permit. So moving the king, you can, you can move as many spaces as you want, paying two gold per spot. So you can pay a lot of money and move if you can't get the permits that you need. Now, in addition to these four different main actions that we've gone over, you have the option of doing any one of these like extra actions. And these can be done before or after your main action, but you always have to do one main. These are optional. You can only do one of them. So this is turning in three gold to get an assistant. This is spending an assistant to wipe two of the permit boards. So I got to spend those two assist uh, that assistant, and I would take these two out. Maybe I don't see the permit I like, and two new ones would come out. I would probably do it at the beginning of my turn, and then these would go at the bottom bottom stack uh, of this. I could spend an assistant to elect a new counselor. That's the same thing that we did before when we pushed a new counselor on and pushed somebody off. But in this case, we don't get four coins for it, but we used an assistant to do that. And the last is you can use three assistants to take another one of these main actions. That's pretty much the whole game. It's very simple, but very elegant. And the game will end as soon as one person puts out all their 10th Emporium. Everybody else gets one turn, and then you go to final scoring. First, the player who played that 10th Emporium would get three points. And then whoever's furthest on the nobility track would get five points if you're tied. You'd both get five, and that's it. If you weren't tied, the leader gets five, and this person gets two points. Then, the person who had built the most permit tiles, meaning face down permit tiles that they had built emporiums on the board, would then get three points. And then you add up all your bonus points and give yourself points for those. And the one who has the most is the winner. All right, it's time for some real talk. You know, I spend hours upon hours, way too much time researching games that are coming out, especially before larger conventions. This game came out at Essen last year, and it just hit my radar as I was reading through descriptions and looking you know, at stuff, and, and I ended up asking for this, and I got it sent to me. And as you can imagine, around Essen, I had over 60 review copies I'm staring at, and, and quite honestly, looking at the box and looking at the board and stuff, it just looked pretty boring. And I'm saying, I, I, I know I must have been interested in this, but I don't really remember what, but I'll give it a shot, you know, when I get around to it. And it just continued to kind of just never bubble up to the top. And it just sat around for months, unfortunately. I just have too many games to review. And recently, Tom Vassal did a review on it and said how it looked really boring, but it was very fun. Uh, so, you know, it kind of like pushed it up that, pushed it up sort of my radar a little bit more. And I did get a chance to play it finally uh, a few times. And I absolutely love this game. This is a fantastic game. I mean, the designers who's, who did this have done games like Zolkin uh, and uh, Grand Austria Hotel and Voyages of Marco Polo. I mean, these, these are good designers, uh, which is probably what made me want to play it in the first place. But, you know, aesthetically, it's not that pleasing. It looks very dry. It looks kind of boring. But it's, it, let me tell you why I love this game. First of all, it, it, so it's a, I'd say a medium weight Euro, but the mechanics are very simple. You're only doing one of four things on your turn. I mean, it's really simple. 
The coolest thing, the reason why this game really shines is the comboing of those bonuses. As the game's going on, you're putting these cities and you're trying to strategically get them so they're in one big line. So when you put a city, you go, oh, I get three points. Oh, I get three coins. Oh, I get an assistant. Oh, I'm moving the ability trap. And you're just like comboing all these things and you're putting together these huge turns towards the end. And it's even fun to watch other people do it. Even though you know they're catching up to you or beating you, you're like, wow, that was a cool turn. That's the coolest thing about this game. The mechanics are simple. Uh, I like how the boards are different every time. You can flip them over and stuff, so every game feels different. You're looking at the permits, trying to figure out what should I do. You have different colored cards. You're like, ooh, I need this permit, but I can't get there. Can I move the king instead? Ooh, it's gonna cost me money. How can I raise money? Easy, easy mechanics, but good depth. So this is high in my depth to complexity ratio, which is probably why I love it. It's a quick game. It's over in probably about an hour. Mechanics are simple and easy to teach and it's fun, there's lots of good decisions, there's lots of tension, you're trying to rush to be the first one to be, you know, to, to get all of a color, to get that big king's bonus and the bonus, or maybe trying to get all the area. There's lots of things to push and pull in this game with an easy set of mechanisms, and that's why I love it. Uh, so I definitely recommend checking this out. I have a feeling someone's gonna be picking this up uh, and bringing it over to, to North American distribution. For now, it's just Cranial Creations and Europe. And I love this game so much that I'm gonna keep it in my collection. And for that, let's give it a saxophone serenade to induct it properly. And since this is called Console of Four, let's take a look and do a little serenade with Miles Davis Four. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.